Insurance Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 58 of 2023, be now read a second time. Honorable Speaker, again, uh, allow me, Honorable Speaker, to begin by thanking the Committee of Health under the able leadership of the Chair, the Honorable Pukose, and his Vice Chair, the member for Chukai Gamba Ngombe, Honorable Patrick. Uh, because again, as I mentioned, uh, as I moved the digital services bill, digital health bill, honorable speaker, this committee sat through the recess period to listen to very many stakeholders and very many of them, honorable speaker, were interested in this social health insurance bill. Because this bill, honorable speaker, in a big way, changes the management of the National Health Insurance Fund as we have known it. Honorable Speaker, members will appreciate the challenges that have bedeviled NHIF. Right from the days of clinics to the recent times of St. Peter's and some other facilities in, uh, you saw in Meru. And every now and then, government has had to crack the whip to deal either with the board or the management at NHIF because of issues that touch on corruption, Honorable Speaker. This bill speaks to matters touching on corruption in the governance and management structure of NHIF, Honorable Speaker. Because we have had a mongrel of an organization in NHIF that has grown over the years. Honorable Speaker, a number of amendments have been done to the NHIF Act, Honorable Speaker, and uh, very many reforms have uh, been effected in the health insurance coverage of Kenyans and to enhance the capacity of NHF, Honorable Speaker. And this part of these reforms included the upward revision of premiums that we did in this house in 2015, the expansion of the NHF benefit package that previously included only inpatient care, uh, and we, uh, they now added outpatient care and several other specialized services. Honorable Speaker, members will also appreciate the care for certain illnesses like the treatment of uh, uh, dialysis or rather provision of dialysis services under NHIF, the provision of chemo and radiotherapy services also that uh, have subsequently become payable under NHIF. Honorable Speaker, they also have had various reforms in the human resource structure and functional, the function organization structure of NHIF. ICT, just as we've just uh, uh, spoken to with the digital health bill, there have been various ICT-related reforms uh, relating to automation of uh, several key core functions, including claims management at the NHF, member registration, and premium contribution. Today, Kenyans can be able to contribute for their premiums uh, from uh, dialing on their phones. And, of course, several amendments that we've had to do in this House uh, to the NHIF Act. Honorable Speaker, the Social Health Insurance Bill of 2023 seeks to accelerate the progress that we have made uh, in these reforms and actualize universal health coverage, as we did promise under the Kenya Kwanzaa Administration in our campaigns last year. Honorable Speaker, where those reforms, reform initiatives have yielded significant progress, several gaps still remain, especially uh, uh, from a recent analysis which shows that, among others, the National Health Insurance Fund operates under a very passive uh, regime and is therefore a passive buyer or a passive purchaser of health services rather than a strategic purchase of health services. NHIF, Honorable Speaker, is also plagued by inefficiency and governance challenges, as has been witnessed in the recent past, Honorable Speaker, just the other day, uh, a number of uh, high-ranking officers at NHIF were forced to relinquish their positions, including the former CEO, because of those governance challenges and efficiencies in the system. Honorable Speaker, NHF has also turned to be potentially financially unsustainable under its current structure. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, it is against this backdrop that the government 
proposed to have a paradigm shift, a complete paradigm shift in the provision of social health insurance as proposed in this bill and one that would seek to, among others, repeal the current NHIF Fund Act of 1998. And therefore, Honorable Speaker, the principal object of this bill is to put one a legislative framework that will regulate the provision of social health insurance, promote the implementation of the universal health coverage, as I mentioned, as was uh, uh, espoused in our Vision 2030 and reinforced by the Kenya Kwanzaa's plan of 2022. It will also ensure that all Kenyans have access to affordable and compre comprehensive quality health services. The bill, therefore, Honorable Speaker, upon enactment will repeal the National Health Insurance Act No. 9 of 1998. This bill, Honorable Speaker, will regulate the provision of social health insurance, which will reduce the current high cost of out-of-pocket expenses by many Kenyans uh, on health care. In doing this, Honorable Speaker, we will be fulfilling the provisions of Article 43 of our Constitution on social rights, which among us them includes the right to uh, access affordable health care, and that is what we seek to provide under UHC. Honorable Speaker, the paradigm shift that I spoke to seeks to address primary health care with the goal of enhancing preventative and promotive care to reduce the demand for health care commodities. Honorable Speaker, members will know that the current state is one that deals more with curative or rather has a curative approach rather than a preventative and a promotive approach. And therefore, we are shifting from what is more of curative to preventative and promotive approach that will come under the primary health care. We also be in a situation, Honorable Speaker, currently where we have a non-comprehensive of vertical services and we are moving to a comprehensive and integrated services uh, under this new bill and uh, that will be uh, realized through the digital health bill that we just passed, Honorable Speaker. We have a fragmented primary health care uh, structure. Honorable Speaker, we endeavor to shift to a primary health care which has uh, networks that strengthen service delivery at right from level one, level two, all the way to level three. Honorable Speaker, lastly, we have under NHIF a non-sustainable or a financial support system that is not sustainable as we speak. Therefore, we are moving to a very sustainable financing model where Kenyans, who, those who are paying 500 shillings, will now enjoy lower rates at the rate of 300 shillings. Honorable Speaker, we are moving to a sustainable system where Kenyans who could, before could not access health care because they could not afford, today under the primary health care fund, so long as they are members of NHIF or they have registered with the fund, they will be able to access primary health care at their local dispensaries at level one, two, three, without having to pay honorable speaker, and the social health insurance fund will cater for their health care. Over and above that, honorable speaker, Kenyans have suffered immensely. And I spoke as I moved the digital health bill, Honorable Speaker, to instances where families have agonized as to whether to sell their land, dispose of other valuable assets to be able to sort out medical bills. And especially so, Honorable Speaker, if you've had a family member who suffers from a chronic illness, Honorable Speaker, be it cancer or diabetes, Honorable Speaker, the cost is out of reach for millions of Kenyans. And in the Honorable Speaker, the Chair of the Health Committee will tell you, probably less than 7% of the Kenyan population is able to afford quality health services that is provided by our health, uh, health services sector. And this bill seeks to ensure that no Kenyan is left behind in the provision of accessible, affordable, and quality health care, Honorable Speaker. Whether you suffer from chronic illnesses, 
whether you are among those who are categorized as indigents or uh, even the elderly in our community, people who have no access to any productive sources of income. Honorable Speaker, under this new architecture of NHIF, under the Social Health Insurance Fund, Honorable Speaker, those people will be able to access health care again that will be catered for by the Social Health Insurance Fund, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, as I say, the bill promotes the attainment of universal health coverage, and that is why I'm speaking to uh, right from primary health care to the chronic illnesses that will be catered under for by this bill. And uh, by realizing universal health coverage in the country, it seeks to ensure that all Kenyans have access to affordable and comprehensive quality health services. This is through the provision of health coverage, as I mentioned, to older persons, indigents, and other vulnerable persons in our society, including persons in lawful custody. And Honorable Speaker, that tells you that even those who are in our prisons today, you know, Honorable Speaker, for many years, being in prison in this country is almost like a death sentence. Because if you fall sick in our prison services, in our prisons, Honorable Speaker, you are a candidate for going to heaven or anywhere else. Uh, because access to health care is almost impossible under our current regime. But we are making sure with this bill, Honorable Speaker, that even those of us in society who are undergoing correctional services, in our correctional services, have access to affordable and meaningful quality health care, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, this bill, if you look at part three and part four and part five of the bill, Part three, Honorable Speaker, is a bill that seeks to create the primary health care fund, which will receive monies appropriated by us here in the National Assembly, grants, gifts, and donations. It will also have monies allocated for that purpose, for the purposes that it is established from fees and levies that they administer, and monies accruing or received by the fund from any other source, Honorable Speaker. And this primary health care fund, Honorable Speaker, is what I was speaking to that we take care of Kenyans at the primary health care facilities, be it level one, be it level two, be it level three, or your local health care dispensary, Honorable Speaker. And you know, Honorable Speaker, again, the chair of the committee will tell you as they engage with stakeholders and uh, in the health care sector, they got to learn that many Kenyans who are suffering from chronic illnesses like cancer or what are categorized as critical illnesses are Kenyans who never had to progress to that critical stage of getting into the critical illnesses or chronic illnesses if they had proper health care at the primary health care sector uh, level, Honorable Speaker. And it is that that this bill seeks to cure. That a Kenyan today should be able to walk into a level one, level two, level three facility or even a local dispensary, get the correct diagnosis. And Honorable Speaker, let me just go back. Beyond primary health care in the dispensaries and level one, two, three hospitals, yesterday, Honorable Speaker, those who cared to watch and follow what the president was doing at Uhuru Park, he was not speaking, as I've seen some bloggers say, that he was commissioning development for a hostile country. The president was commissioning universal health uh, uh, universal health coverage services and uh, by commissioning the volunteers who the CHVs, community health volunteers who have been working uh, with no pay and now they are being incorporated in the mainstream healthcare sector of our country being paid by government through our national government and our county governments and hundreds of thousands of community health promoters and volunteers, Honorable Speaker, will now work under stipend. And with the bags that you saw them being commissioned with at Uhuru Park yesterday, and I was saying it is not what that particular blogger was talking about that the president is commissioning development to a hostile country. There is nothing hostile with a country that is dealing with a dysfunctional healthcare system. 
and it begins with those community health promoters. With their bags, they should be able to walk into your home tomorrow, take your temperature. If you have COVID, they will be able to diagnose that and be able to tell you now you need to go to a hospital. If it was probably just a small headache, they will be able to administer paracetamols because they are trained for that. They will be able to measure your blood pressure. They will be able to measure your blood sugar. And that way, they will be able to offer you proper advice, medical advice, on what kind of service you need to seek and from what facility, Honorable Speaker. And that brings us now to the primary health care fund that will now come in and take care of you at the primary health facilities level. And that, if you are a member of this fund, Honorable Speaker, you need not worry about the bills. They will be sorted out. Honorable Speaker, part four of the bill speaks to the creation. Honorable Speaker, if you can protect me from the member for Konoin, Brighton, Yagon, and the member for Bomet Central, who are behaving like we are in such technical. And you could hear the way they are laughing, Honorable Speaker, like they are in a classroom in such technical. I hear they are discussing the transformation of Fona Botoso. <laughs> but we must protect the Honor Botoso from the Honor Brighton and the Honor Kipiagon. And especially from that uh, laughter by Honor Brighton here. Honorable <laughs> Speaker, I wanted them to listen. Because if you go to Met County, Longisa Hospital, there are many patients there who ought not to have been referred to Longisa, taking up bed space if they had accessible and affordable primary health care. And that is why I needed the members from Bomet County to listen. Honorable Speaker was saying in part four, the Social Health Insurance Fund is being established under part four of this bill. And this fund, Honorable Speaker, is what will basically take up most of the work that now was under what is NHF as we know it, Honorable Speaker. If you go to part five of the bill, Honorable Speaker, it creates what I've already spoken to, the Emergency, Chronic, and Critical Illnesses Fund. Honorable Speaker, I have said, and I've mentioned uh, uh, there before, Honorable Speaker, that this fund, Honorable Speaker, is what has made many families across our country destitute. 